Welcome to Counters. In this lesson, we are going to be looking at the weighted average inventory costing. This is an inventory costing method that uses the weighted average unit cost to calculate the cost of goods sold and the cost of ending inventory. So it uses the weighted average unit cost. And we're going to go through a thorough example just now, which will help you understand it much better and help you know how to calculate it. So if you do not know how to calculate it, I'm confident that after this video, you will know how to do so. In our previous lessons, we looked at how to calculate the inventory, the cost of inventory using the first in, first out or the FIFO method. We also looked at the last in, first out inventory costing method. So if you'd like to check those ones out, you'll find the links in the description below or you will see the links on the top right of the screens appearing there right now. But in this lesson, let's go ahead with the weighted average inventory costing. Using perpetual inventory, the new inventory that is purchased is added to the material already in stock. Very important. An average price must be determined after each purchase by dividing the total cost of stock on hand by the total number of units on hand. And this is what the weighted average inventory costing does. It calculates the average price by dividing the total cost of stock on hand that is the total cost of all stock that you have by the total number of units on hand and you'll understand this much better when we go through this example so let's get right into it here we have an example and we are given transactions that happened during the month of october we are told that the following transactions have been concluded in respect of a particular stock item for the month of october 2019 we are asked to calculate the value of closing stock using the weighted average method. And that's what we're going to do right now. And this is the table or the format of the table that we are going to use. We have date at the beginning and it's the same for all the methods, FIFO and the LIFO as well as the weighted average method. So it's a very simple way of calculating the, uh, the, the, the value of your, of your stock. So we have date and then we have receipts. This is all the inventory that comes in that we receive or that we purchase. The next column is issues. And these are inventory which are issued or which are sold to customers. And then we have balances. This is inventory that is left or this is inventory that we have in stock after each transaction that takes place. So we have these three columns here and it's very important to note that when you're doing inventory costing, whether you're using FIFO, LIFO or the weighted average, you are using the cost at which you bought the inventory. So we are not concerned about the cost at which you sold that inventory. So maybe your question will have the selling price of the inventory. You will not be concerned about that. You will be concerned about the cost at which you bought the inventory. So let's go right into the example. So let's do this one here. So we'll be going through one at a time. So let's start with the one at the 1st of October. So I have done it this way so that one appears on top here after each transaction appears on top here and then we sort it out. So let's go right ahead. We are told that on the 1st of October, stock on hand was 100 units at 10 rand per unit so let's start by recording what we have on hand the first thing that we do we record our date first of october and then what do we do we write the balance because this is the balance that we have at the beginning of the period so we write it under receipts balance and then we put the balance right here at the end we have 100 units at 10 rand per unit and the amount we are given there is 1000 rand that is the total cost of the inventory we currently have in stock so let's move on to the second one on the third oh, sorry on the third of october yes that is the second one on the third of october we issued 40 units so these are issued stock so this is stock that we sold so we sold 40 units so what do we do we record them under issues so we put the date there third of october remember always to put the date and then under issues we put the quantity 40 units and then at which cost remember even if we were given the selling price here we're told that it was sold maybe for uh, 20 rand we're not concerned about that we're concerned at how much we bought it for or how much we had it in our stock for we had it at 10 rand per unit so we put 10 10 rand per unit and the amount there is 440 times 10 rand per unit gives us a total of 400 so those are the those are the that's the number of stock that we have just issued or we have just sold so what is our balance remember after each transaction we have to do our balance with which with with whichever method that you're using so we put our balance there it's 100 
minus 40 gives us a balance of 60 units at 10 rand per unit and we have a balance of 600 rand in total the value of our stock that is remaining and then let's go to the third one on the 8th of october we received stock 160 units at 12 rand per unit so the first thing that we do is that we put our date there 8th of october and then we go to receipts we put 160 units at 12 rand per unit and it gives us a total of 1920 rand so that is the stock that we have received in stock and now we have to do our balance again remember we had 60 units remaining in our stock so we take the 60 units plus the 160 units which we have just received or we have just purchased and then we have a total of 220 units now we put that under quantity 220 units now what do we do at what price are we going to do it well this is now where you have to calculate the you have to calculate the weighted average of all the inventory that we have so first of all that what we do we calculate the totals of all the stock that we have well we have a total of 600 rand that we that we had in stock before we purchased and then we purchased the one worth 100 1920 so we add the two together to get the total of 2520 and we put that under amount 2520 so you can see what i've done here you calculate the number of units that you have we had 60 units plus 160 you put it under quantity and then you calculate the total cost for each of the badges that you have we had 60 units at 10 rand per unit it's a total of 600 and then we bought 160 units at 12 rand per unit which is a total of 1920 so we add the two together 600 plus 1920 and we put the total over here so you can see whenever there's a change in inventory whenever we bring in more inventory then we do that we calculate the total units and we calculate the total of each batch and we add them together so and then what do we do what is the unit cost well that is the one which is very important we take the total amount 2520 divide by the total number of units that we have in stock 220 and we get a unit cost of 11 rand 45 cents so that is the weighted average unit cost so far for the inventory that we have. So we put 11 rand 45 cents over there. And that is how it works with the weighted average uh, inventory costing. So let's go to the next one. The fourth one is October 13. So the 13th of October, we issued stock 40 units again. So what do we do? We put our date October 13 and we go to issues and we put 40 units. And at what price is it? We issued 40 units what price are we going to put it at well what is our weighted average units what's the average price of our unit it's 11 rand 45 cents so we use that amount so we put 11 rand 45 cents and the total there is 458 rand that is how it works whatever balance you have at the end there at the unit price that you have it at that is the one that you will use to put the, the to, to put under issues whenever you're selling the inventory so when we go to our balances column, how many units are we left with? Well, it's two, 220 minus 40, and then we get the quantity that we have. So we put 220 minus 40, we are left with 180. And at what price? Remember, it's still 11 rand 45 cents. Because we didn't purchase new unit, it's what we had in stock. That's why we still maintain that 11 rand 45 cents. And then you multiply 180 times 11 rand 45 cents, it gives you a total of 2,061 rand let's move to the next one the fifth one is 16 october issued stock 60 units so you issued 60 more units and that's the 16 of october we put our date over there and then we go to issues and we put the 60 units and it's at 11 rand 45 cents and it gives us a total of 687 rand for the units that we have issued so you can see here whenever we are issuing we are not bringing in new inventory we use the weighted average cost or the average cost that we had calculated from the last time we brought in inventory and that was when we had 160 units we had to calculate the new average cost of our units or of our stock so it was 11 rand 45 cents and if you're not bringing in any more inventory then we we maintain that same uh that same unit cost of the inventory we don't recalculate a new one so we use that one so what is our balance well 180 rand sorry 180 units minus the 60 units will give us a balance of 120 units and it's still 11 rand 45 cents and it gives us a total of 1374 rand so let's move on to the next one the sixth one october 23rd we are told that returned stock to supplier so we returned stock 
to the supplier. 20 units which was received on the 8th of October. So what is it telling us here? That we received units on the 8th of October, which is this one here, 160 at 12 rand per unit. And now we are returning 20 of them. So it's important that they told us that on the 8th of October. So what happens when you return units to supplier? Well, we have to deduct it from the number of units that we have in stock. So what do we do? We put our date, 23rd of October, and we put it under receipts, but we put it in brackets. Why do we put it under receipts? Because we we're not going to put it under issues because we didn't sell it. We put it under receipts because it's the one that we received that we are taking back. So we're putting it in brackets. So you put 20 units in brackets at 12 rand per unit. Very important. Why at 12 rand per unit? Because we bought it at 12 rand per unit. So we are returning it at the same price at which we bought it at. You can think of it this way. When we return our goods back to the supplier, obviously they refined us the amount at which we paid and we paid 12 rand per unit and it was 240 rand. Now, very important thing that we do here, how many units are we left with? Remember this average cost of 11 rand 45 cents that we had the balance before we returned was based on all the inventory that we bought in, that we brought in. And that inventory that we brought in includes the 20 units. Now we have to calculate a new average price of inventory. Very important to note that, that the reason we are calculating a new one is because this 20 units is part of these 120 units. And the average price that we calculated is based on all the inventory that we received, including these 20 units. That's why we have to recalculate the new average price because the 20 units are being returned back to the supplier. So what do we do here? Well, we take 120 minus 20 units. We are left with 100 units in stock. So we put that under quantity, 100 units. And we do the same, exact same thing for the amount. And you'll remember us doing this when we bought these 160 units. You take 1,370, which is the balance that we had before we returned the inventory, minus the 240 rand. So 1,374 minus 240 rand, it gives us a balance of 1,134. So we put the 1,134 there. And then how do we get the unit cost? The new unit, unit cost after we've returned those units to the supplier? Well, if you, if you guessed that we take the total amount here, 1,134, divide by the 100 units we have in stock, then you'd be correct. So it's 1,134 divided by 100 units left. It gives us a new unit unit cost of 11 rand 34 cents and that is how the weighted average unit cost works so in summary whenever you bring in new inventory you have to recalculate the new unit cost the new cost for each unit that you have in stock and i've just shown you how you do that whenever you issue inventory whenever you're selling inventory you do not recalculate the new unit cost again because it's based on the inventory that you already have in stock but whenever you're buying inventory or whenever you're returning it to supplier, you have to recalculate the new unit cost. And I hope this example has helped you in order to do that, has helped you do that. And I hope you are able to do that on your own right now. If you have any question or any queries, you can leave them in the comment section below. Otherwise, if you have gained value from this lesson, please subscribe to our channel, like this video and share it to those who you think it might help. Till next time. Cheers.